Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the LG Cinebeam Q. Now, it was formerly known as the Cube, and actually they only changed the name a few weeks before this is coming out. So the box says Cube, but it is actually now just a Q. And is this not the cutest thing you've ever seen? This is a 4K laser projector that can go up to 120 inches on your wall. So the question is, can the LG Cinebeam Q HU710PB which is a bit of a mouthful, can something this small actually be a good projector? And why would you buy this over some much more affordable alternatives? Okay, so unlike a regular projector where you just set it up and leave it, the idea with the Cinebeam Q is that the minuscule size and this 360 degree handle makes it easier to grab, find a spot, plug it in, and have a big screen experience basically anywhere. Well, anywhere you can plug it in, it's not running on a battery. And while there are plenty of compact projectors out there, it's what this packs into its tiny size that makes the difference. 4K, a laser light source for better colors, contrast, and deeper blacks. We get HDR10, HDMI 2.1 with eARC, USB-C, Bluetooth, and speakers, along with LG's WebOS 6 software for all your usual streaming apps. Brightness is rated at 500 ANSI lumens, which isn't a lot. and means you really do need to find a dark room to get the most out of it, but I'll come back to that in a second. What I absolutely love about this though, aside from its Pixar-esque, extremely cute design, is the auto screen adjustment. Plonk it down, point it at the surface, and almost instantly, it'll adjust the image shape or the keystone and the focus to match the surface. And it'll keep doing it even as you move around. And I was genuinely impressed how dead on the image was even off angle and propped up on a book. Although to be fair, most new projectors do have some form of this auto image alignment and adjustment, but I've used this in the gym for watching TV in my dining room, and I could just see it being fun at a party or maybe for watching a movie outdoors in the evening. Just be aware that the power cable is pretty short, so you might want to bring an extension lead with you as well. Oh, and by the way, if throughout this video you see weird sort of rainbowy strobing across the image, you don't see that in real life. It's just how my camera sees laser RGB projectors, although apparently some people's eyes are actually sensitive to this. So as with any projector, the further you move it away, the bigger the image gets. And you can go from 50 inches up to 120 inches. If you do have the room and you can get 120 inches from this, that's three meters corner to corner. While other compact options can hit 200 inches, they're not usually 4K and never in a design this small. Placing it 1.5 meters or just under five feet from a surface will give you that 50 inch image. It did work closer, but at around one meter or so it starts to lose focus. Although for that full 120 inches, you'll need to place it 3.6 meters or 12 feet away. That's a surprisingly lot of space, more than a lot of people have, but it is similar to other compact options. Plus you'll need a surface actually big enough to project the image. Although what I found with this is that I don't necessarily need that full 120 inches. The beauty of this is just the portability of it. And actually because of the auto adjusting keystone, I can just shine it at any random spot on the wall. And it's kind of fun having a big screen in places you normally wouldn't. And going with a smaller image has some advantages. Since you're spreading the available light and resolution over a smaller area, the image looks brighter and sharper. However, the autofocus did seem to get a bit confused at over 100 inches or so, where it would slowly defocus after a few seconds until I forced a refocus, but then it did it again. Luckily though, all the manual projection options are here as well, which did fix the issue for me, and hopefully a future update will sort this out because I have been testing this a few weeks before launch. But let's talk about this design. And actually, if I shut up just for a second, you might be able to hear the fan. Hopefully my mic's picking that up. I can hear the fan, although I am stood right next to it and I don't have anything playing. There is an audible fan noise, although you'll drown it out straight away with any kind of volume from your movie or your TV show. It doesn't get particularly hot. It's a little bit warm on the top here, but not too bad at all. And while moving it around while it's plugged on like this, I wouldn't think it would be particularly good for a projector. I've been doing it for a couple of weeks now. I've been putting it in my backpack, carrying it around, uh, using it every which way, pointing it every surface I possibly could, and I've not had any problems so far. And I just love the way this thing looks. I guess you'd call this modernist industrial design, but it reminds me of something between a vintage box camera and Wally -E from the Pixar movie. It's classy in a way that projectors usually aren't. And the size really does make a difference to how much you want to move this around. It'd be easy to pack up for a trip. Build quality is great, the metal finish feels premium, and the handle is stiff enough to stay where you leave it. We also get three watt stereo speakers, and they're okay, although if you could Bluetooth or eARC out to a soundbar or some of the speakers, I would recommend it. But for kids' movies or YouTube videos, it's fine. 
There are also IR sensors at the front and the back for the remote control. And you've also got a Kensington lock on the side so you can tether it to your desk so no one nicks it. It's a good range of ports, although I wouldn't have said no to another HDMI because it would have been good to plug in my PS5 and my soundbar with this. First time setup was nice and simple, just add your Wi-Fi and location and then you're straight into the webOS interface, which is basically the same as LG's TV version. We get the usual picture and gaming modes, including Game Optimizer, which does a good job of minimizing input lag, meaning games all felt pretty quick and responsive. And unlike a lot of off-brand cheaper alternatives, the interface here is really easy to use. We get Apple AirPlay, you get a media player, App Store, and a browser. And you could also plug in an Apple TV or a Chromecast with Google TV. But for portability, you'll want to keep things simple. One thing I will say, compared to this lovely piece of industrial design, the remote feels, well, very much like an afterthought. It's a cheap plastic white thing that looks like it would go along with a $300 projector. But it's functional, it does the job. But the big question for any TV or projector is how good does it look? What's the image quality actually like? And I'll tell you, in a darker room, this thing can look great. I'm projecting this on a darker gray painted wall, which is kind of the next best thing if you don't use a projection screen. That said, it's okay on a white painted wall, but far from the best it can be. Even in standard, and especially the brightest mode, I am impressed by the contrast. The blacks look nice and inky, the colors are super saturated, perhaps a bit too much, but skin tones looked accurate, and even motion looked great without too much blur. All in, it's pretty impressive actually, especially if you're watching punchy 4K HDR content. Problem is, if you let a little bit of ambient light into the room, or you decide to use this in the daytime, that contrast and those colors just kind of evaporate. So for daytime use, unless you have some really decent blinds or blackout curtains, you're going to lose a lot of detail and image quality. So yes, you can take this thing anywhere, as long as you can plug it in, and it will only take about 30 seconds to get up and running, but part of your setup routine is going to be minimizing any light. And while 500 ANSI lumens is quite good for a super compact model like this, if you are looking to use this as your main screen for movies and TVs, you are much better off with a bigger and brighter laser-based model that will do 15 to 2500 ANSI lumens, and it will probably be cheaper as well. To be fair, a proper projector screen would make a world of difference to the image quality here, especially a fancy ambient light reflecting one or ALR screen, but those guys at 120 inches cost a lot. And I mean a lot. So you really have to set expectations that this probably isn't going to replace your main TV or main projector system, whatever your setup is. It's a fun little secondary screen for your bedroom, your kids' room, taking to a party, using outdoors for a cinema night. And to be fair, even when I'm not actually using this, it's kind of nice just to have around. It looks good. Also bear in mind that while projected 4K doesn't look anything like as sharp as an actual 4K TV, it can be noticeably sharper than 1080p, especially if you're projecting it over 100 inches. Although, if the focus is even out slightly, it can be hard to notice that this is 4K. And for gaming, there's actually a 1080p mode at 120Hz, meaning you can play the silky smooth 120fps if your game supports it. And that will also help everything feel way more responsive. So really this has three USPs. You've got the portable, very nice design, you've got the 4K resolution, and you've got the fact that it's using a laser light source. Versus a traditional lamp-based projector, the single laser light on the Q gives a much wider range of colors. LG reckon this covers 154% of the P3 color gamut, and also better contrast. But we have to talk about the price. How much would you pay for one of these? How much do you think something like this would be worth? Bear in mind LG tech is usually a little bit on the higher end, and you're also going to pay a premium for a 4K laser projector in a box this small and nice, but it's not cheap. We're looking at $1,299 for the Cinebeam Q, and you can get away with paying half that with some rivals, although they will be 1080p and they don't look as nice. And while it's maybe unfair to compare it with 1080p alternatives like Samsung's Freestyle Gen 2 or XGME's Mogo 2 Pro, which are also really compact and literally half the price, and if I wanted true portable, like I don't even have to plug it in, then I would look at XGME's Halo Plus or the Anker Nebula Mars 3 Air. Again, they are 1080p, but you're getting a battery for two to two and a half hours of use, so they are genuinely portable. You could take them camping. And also, if you're wondering about those super cheap models on Amazon that say 4K, well, usually that means they're capable of playing back 4K content, but actually display at 720p. So watch out for that. So it's not an old timey camera or uh, a gas lamp. It is a mini 4K laser projector, and it's a lovely bit of kit. Quite pricey, not for everyone, not going to replace your main TV. But if you do want something that is reasonably portable, looks great, and projects a decent image, particularly if you've got a very low-light environment, then 
you can't go wrong with the LG Cinebeam Q. I know this has just come out, but if I had a wish list for the next version in 2025, then I would love to see maybe a thousand lumens if that was possible, just a little bit brighter. Uh, also another HDMI would be good to see. And also perhaps some sort of optional battery accessory that could have it going for a couple of hours. Maybe you'd pay extra for that, but just some option to not have to plug it in because obviously one of the biggest selling points is the portability, but you're still tethered to the wall or to the extension lead. But what do you think? Would you be tempted by something like this? Do you have a projector in your setup and what's it been like? Let me know in the comments. And if you do fancy picking one of these up for yourself, I will leave links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Channel.